Hello everyone, this is Tom Jennings of What to Do with Your Old Explicit Content. And before we get the show started this week, I just want to issue an official apology. We're a week late on this one. I'm the one to blame. But that being said, I also want to give a big shout out to all of our listeners. Thank you so much for helping us grow the podcast. And if you do like it, please share it. Please let us know. We're having a great time doing it. We've received some fantastic feedback, and the only way we can continue doing this is if somebody keeps listening, and that's you. So thanks. So without further ado, one of my favorite words to use for the Wordle, here's the show. Timer. You got the timer? You got the timer. You time is on my side. Yes, yes it, it is. is. Wow, listen, we are we are not only the uh, hosts of the most popular podcast in Oakfield, New York. Well, that's that's we're reported the, in Oakfield. We're the York. most popular podcast hosted by us two. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, welcome to the podcast. This is a this is going to be episode. I'm trying to to I think it's eleven. One hundred and forty seven. Eleven or twelve. One hundred forty seven episodes. I don't know. No, it's like twelve. We've done a lot of things together, but this is what to do with your old explicit content, formerly known as what to do with your old porn. Your old porn. I yeah. Which the old porn has gone literally. Literally, it's gone. Yeah. Now we just have explicit content. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm Tom. This is uh, Jack, Jack Burrs. So, Howdy. How are you today? Fabulous. I know. We just finished. We got Happy Jack now. We got Happy Jack. We, we had a nice we had a nice little cookout meal. We probably had all the really good discussions already in the last hour <laughs> and 25 minutes, but, you know, it was a great time. I was, I pre, I, if I don't say, I don't think I've said it on there. I really do appreciate our friendship a lot. Ditto. All right. Well, let's go. What do we got? What's our topic? Um... Our topic today, it was something that I heard, which I don't know if there's an answer for it, so it's a good one. Uh, the poison is in the dose, or is it? Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, I don't know. In the uh, context of the conversation, they were talking about uh, educa- education and stuff like that. You know, basically saying that uh, too little education makes people, leaves people thinking they know far more than they do. And too much education, you know, kind of makes them unrelatable to a lot of people. Interesting. Yeah. But what I was thinking is because you always see advertisements for like carpet care companies or lawn care companies and things like that that say totally natural, you know, 100% natural. Yeah. Stuff like that. Like, well, yeah, so is arsenic. Ar- arsenic is uh, apple seeds? I don't know, but it's natural. I'm pretty sure it's apple seeds. So, yeah, yeah, you can sprinkle it all, all over your lawn or all over your carpet, clean your carpet with it and still claim it's natural. That's uh that's But that was my question, is it <laughs> is it always a dose? <laughs> you know. Oh man. I don't know if we're going to eke another 19 minutes out of this, but <laughs> I don't know either. Like, it's just so funny like the the idea of arsenic being natural you know it's like, like right like, but you could advertise it that way and in this day and age you know well i guess i mean i'm assuming rat poison is arsenic right right you would assume so yeah so do you have like organic i mean if, if the apples aren't organically grown then is the arsenic all natural or not but if arsenic is only all natural well i think yeah then you got the <laughs> uh then you got the uh the starting point between organic and natural Right. Because yeah. apples at this point certainly aren't necessarily, you know, untampered with. Yeah, yeah. I I, I, I don't remember what age I was when I figured out that they actually put, like, a wax on the outside of Red Delicious apples. Yeah. Is it only the Red Delicious or is it many of them? I'm assuming it's many of them, but the Red Delicious to me seems like the most oh, pernicious. Here's a thing. <laughs> I don't even know if I used that word properly, but... Here's the thing. Talk about the dose. Okay. 
Uh, the wife saw something on the internets about, I think it was to, done to preserve your uh, fruits and vegetables because, you know, a lot of times you're buying fruits and vegetables like off season, so they travel 2,000 miles to get to you, so you're paying an arm and leg for them. But it was, uh, I believe it was white vinegar and water and you're supposed to like basically just soak the uh, vegetables in it for like five minutes or whatever, and then you just rinse yeah. it off and put it away. And it, it definitely lasts longer. I mean, people will attest to that, which, you know, makes a lot of sense with the citric, you know, the, the acid in it and stuff like that. But she, I mean, I love her, but she's got this tactile thing going. Like she don't like touching things that are dirty, like the refrigerator handle and stuff like that. Is, gets, that, why, is that why she never shakes my hand? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You'd have to ask her. <laughs> Uh, but she she's constantly cleaning the, like walking across the walking across a bare floor. If she feels something under her feet, she's mm-hmm. cleaning that floor. It's just the way she is. So the, this whole thing with the uh, the vegetables, she started washing the vegetables, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of grossed out with how much crap comes off of vegetables, like, like grapes and stuff like that, or the things that you know you basically look at and go, ah, it's clean. And she washes it, and you see this. It looks like you've been panning for gold. In the Hmm. bottom of the pan. It's really kind of gross. I mean, only in the respect that you know the body can handle it. Yeah. You know, so it's really not that big of a deal. But the fact that you don't realize you're eating that much soil and, you know, bug droppings and whatever else happens to be in there. See, but I I, I was always, I was taught by the, the, my, my dirtier friends, including myself, not, well, dirt, I, not, not dirty. Definitely am they say you know you build dirtier. up. <laughs> they say you build up a better immunity, right? When you get dirty, like if your hands, <sighs> I've read somewhere that you know if you wash your hands too much, that you could become less resistant because well, you're you're not building up an immunity. I mean, I don't know how much truth there is in any of that stuff. I think there's definitely some truth in it because I've been in an industry, you know, cleaning industry for mm-hmm. thirty some odd years, and frankly, it's not what people think it is. You know, it's basically disgusting most of the time, like the inside of our waste tank and stuff that we have to clean at the end. It's absolutely gross. So, you know, they they see the clean truck or, you know, the clean uniforms or whatever we come to the door. But, you know, if we're working on the truck, you know how nasty it is. Mm. And my, my assistant, he comes from a family of like 247 kids or something like that. Well, and they had one more. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there's a lot of people in his family. Yeah. So they... uh Anyway, he, um, yeah, they're always sick. And then the grandkids are coming over and the grandkids are sick, this, that, and the other. And he rarely ever gets what they're, he may get sick once in a while, but it's never what they're, what they've got or or anything like that. And him and I've talked about it, (laughs) talked about it a number of times that it's definitely a, uh, thing where you build up a, uh, as you were saying, where you build up a, uh, tolerance to, to the ickies. My throat is not building up tolerance today. <laughs> Keep talking, Jack. Yeah, okay. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, I I think there's definitely something to that because I don't generally get sick a whole lot myself. But um, here's a nut. Yeah, oh, no, keep, keep going. Okay. I'm I'm actually for for those that care. I'm taking a Ricola right now. I was Ricola. Ricola. Our sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Ricola. What is their What's their thing besides singing Ricola? I don't know what it is, but... I think it's just that. That's brilliant. Man, I had that weird little tickle in the back of my throat, and we kind of deal with it all day. I uh, I think it's because I grilled for work, and I just was breathing in a lot of, like, grill grease. No, I can't. I can't back that up. But what were you saying about Dave Good, who is a listener to the podcast and his I large family? I not say anything about Dave Good. Well, you're talking about Dave Good's family, right? Well, more or less, yeah. Yeah, we, I'm, I'm just I'm name dropping because we got we got a <laughs> name drop. We might actually get somebody to listen. Dave, well, yeah, because when I saw David where he worked in, uh, well, that's because he had PR hostage and they were going out to breakfast. Oh, yeah, he yeah. had our, had our friend PR with him and they were going out to breakfast, and he says, "Hey, have you heard Jack and Tom's podcast?" He says, "No," and it was like a conveniently a 20 minute ride there and a 20 minute ride home so he forced them to listen to two if not three of the podcasts oh nice yeah well thank you thanks dave thanks dave <laughs> but um hey here's another one okay do you polish your apples before you eat them me yeah oh yeah absolutely not my shirt why because it gives them static electricity like a i don't know i, I don't know why i do it i don't know it's just the thing 
Because yeah. I did it in front of somebody, and they're like, what are you doing? I'm well, like, it's polishing like the, an apple. What do you mean, what am I doing? Yeah. It's like the throwing the sh- salt over the shoulder. Do you do that? No. No. Oh, yeah. did, did we not just have the, contact, the conversation about my <laughs> tactile wife and the things on the floor? <laughs> yeah, we... Like, we'd go out to restaurants, we would go anywhere. My sister will tell you. My sister, who doesn't listen to the podcast. And uh, we always did the salt over the shoulder. Like, it was What's some, that for, again? I don't know, some kind of luck thing, like, it's supposed to bring you luck. Until you hit the guy behind you on the high with the salt and he punches you in the noggin. Man, I made it through life without <laughs> getting hit by anybody. But I, I don't really do it anymore, but it was just such a natural thing, but... It's 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 going back to the apple thing. It's like the na- the apple thing is such a, it's like a reflex. Well, I think the apple thing makes sense because what you just kind of started this in this conversation with was the wax coating, right? Which you know it's probably a paraffin wax, which is you know water soluble. I believe at you know a certain temperature and that kind of like coconut oil, which you know just melts very low, so it's just going to pass through your system anyway. Is it going to come off on your shirt though? I would think so, wouldn't you? I don't know. I feel like this is a this is a scientific study waiting to be done. I, you know, the weird thing is there's probably one out there. Yeah. Somebody probably did a study on if you could get the wax off the apple by rubbing it on your shirt. We should definitely get our researchers on that. I mean, I could call, I could hook up the phone and call Wendy Wilson who owns Leonard Oaks. She would know. <laughs> I mean, if you want to do it, I'm game. No, no, no. That's okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> That might actually be good podcast, although it looks like I didn't bring my phone up, so that's not going to happen. But Wendy, if you're listening, we'll text her. Yeah. We'll text her and find out. Yeah. But, you know, the thing is- They have some outrageously good apples. They do. They do. It's Leonard Oaks and uh, another that's not a sponsor. So today we've already name-dropped, what, Ricola and Leonard Oaks. Mm -hmm. But I feel like with somebody like Wendy, if she gave us the answer, it it would be lengthy. There'd be history behind it. You know, she's not going to give you that real quick answer. And I'm not saying that as a bad thing. I'm saying yeah. that as a person who's... I can almost guarantee it'd be entertaining. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, she's funny. Should have just let me call her. Maybe, <laughs> maybe next episode. <laughs> but, yeah. So, where were we? Um, this started with... Something about the poison. Yeah, is it always the dose? Yeah, I don't I don't know. Well, how about that? Is that... Uh, that's a thing now, the microdosing. Oh, we t- well, we were actually just talking about LSD. Well, not we even not necessarily here. LSD. How about those gummies and stuff like that? I, I, don't I mean, kids are taking these gummies like it's candy. Well, I don't know if that's considered microdosing because dosing is well, isn't that how they, they market it that way? As a microdose, microdoses, yeah. Oh. Well, I didn't uh-huh. know. In my day, microdosing was very small quantities of LSD or no, that's psilocybin the, mushrooms. Yeah, they're marketing it um, through. Um, I gosh, what's what's the chemical makeup for the for the uh, drug component of marijuana? But, uh, THC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the microdosing THC through the gummy, yeah, fruits and stuff. They were talking a couple of the. Uh, marketing things I'd heard were like, oh, I just take just enough to. Relax for the meeting, or you know, different things like that. Is that supposed to make Pink Floyd sound okay, but not great? I don't know. I always liked Pink Floyd, <laughs> <laughs> and I never did any of that. <laughs> yeah, what was it? There, were, there was always that, that old joke about the Grateful Dead. They said, uh, you know, what like once the Grateful Dead fan goes to rehab, they realize that the band sucks or something like that. I, I forget the joke. I just massacred it, but you get the gist of it. Yeah, yeah. That was that's. The band I never really got into. Grateful Dead? Yeah. It's a shame. You you will someday. Well, I liked a couple of their songs, but... I like the logos and stuff. I mean, the logos are nice, aren't well, they? Yeah, especially on a Cadillac. Yeah. Absolutely. On a sticker. Yeah, sticker on a Cadillac. I like the little bears. <laughs> there was Damn, a period of my life when I had the little bears on everything. Yeah, but so... But, I mean, what is the what does the adage mean about... I mean, what is the dose supposed to represent in that saying? Well, I think... Uh, it's basically saying that anything in moderation is relatively okay. Mm. Like, obviously, we know water is okay if you take a sip of it, but if you get dropped in the middle of Lake Ontario and have no or rescue, water's not really such a good thing. True. Or oxygen, even. 
same thing. Oxygen you need to breathe, but oxygen straight and alone, unless I'm mistaken, will ultimately kill you if that's all you're getting. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it sounds that sounds reasonable. See, then now we're getting into another topic where my wife says, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'll just make crap up and she believes me. Oh. So if you say it with enough authority, people will believe you. I mean, look at our politicians. Did you just make that whole thing up about if you get too much oxygen? Yeah. Totally. That sounds real, though. Like, See? It, like, it sounds legit. I know. Tell my what This is what I'm... Look it up, and I'm pretty sure... There's got to be some kind of oxygen saturation well, you, where you don't... you know, don't... when you have people with COPD and they're out in oxygen tubes, they yeah. regulate it with a dial. I mean, right. it seems logical to me that if you have to regulate it with a dial, that means too much of it is not a good thing. So then you're not just saying something that you don't that is doesn't have a basis in fact. Well, forget about calling Wendy. Let's call my wife. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> I can. I mean, I I'd have to she, call downstairs to my wife. She. Uh, I mean, she, I do. I have a little. I have a little phone hookup thing. We, one of my other podcasts. I remember I called my son, and he hated it. Man, he was so mad. No, she. Uh, she accuses me of that all the time because I. I constantly would do things like that, especially when we were courting and that I tell her something she's like oh wow and she thought it was all so impressive and then she realized that i was just as she says making it up but i call it deductive reasoning Ah, i mean i think it's reasonable to assume that a car doing 100 miles an hour towards a man is probably going to hit the man and kill him you know it doesn't mean that i'm lying it means i'm probably it's probably going to happen if this car hits this man he's going to die well, it depends on what he's wearing. If he's wearing a right kind of suit. With like what? A giant ooh, bubble wrap suit? Something. Bubble wrap suit. There's probably some kind of, there's got to be some kind of stuntman suit that you could hit, get hit by a car. At 100, 100 miles, miles an, hour. an hour? Yeah. No way. I think so. No. We need fact checkers. That's what we need for I just, That's what I said earlier. Actual fact checkers. Actual fact checkers, which all they would do is use Google anyway. Yeah. We could have like, we could do the show. We could spew our nonsense, and then at the end of the show, the fact checkers could do like they do no, at you CNN. See, you're after, to, you're after supposed after to do debate. the fact checking beforehand. No, it was just like one of the would we do that? One of the presidential debates. You know, you get the guys. <laughs> Unemployment under Abraham Lincoln was at a historic low, and then the, you know they got the little scroll on the bottom of the TV screen that says, "Actually, unemployment was at historic highs." You know that kind of stuff. Yeah, see, that's another realm I'm not into. Abraham Lincoln? No. Politics. Watching anything like that. Oh, I love debates. Yeah. I do. Not as much anymore because it's turned more into this uh, kind of playground name calling thing. But in the day, you know, when they just get those little one liners in there and they, you know, they jockey for position and they'd actually debate issues. That was, that was good. You know, the, you don't need to debate issues anymore. All you got to do is enrage no, people I know. and get them to post stuff. We need to start enraging people as well. <laughs> That's what that's what's lacking in our. I think if they started listening to this podcast about the, you know, how much a dose is too much, and they got to this point of it, they're probably already enraged as it is. About do- like dosing, no, like I mean, we've talked for like seventeen minutes so far about really? absolutely nothing. No, I feel like we've touched on a lot of different subjects. We took an adage, and we've 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 stayed close to the to the mothership of the topic, <laughs> which is the. Thing that you said at the beginning, which again I I'm kind which of understanding now, where you were, where you said you know think think back, you said oh you know if you got don't have enough education, you think you're you're too smart, right? You're if smarter you have too than much education. Else, you can't much, necessarily yeah converse with the other people, and that's kind of wow. That's where our society is, isn't it? I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say. I, it, it it was <laughs> of all places. I remember listening to an episode of of Howard Stern. And and there was a time I really liked listening to Howard Stern. I I not I, I don't dislike him now, but I'm not certainly a a follower or a fan. But they would do this they would do this bit where they would take models and they would ask them like basic questions like oh who was the first president of the United States and none of these these beautiful models would know anything about like basic American history and things like that. And then you know at the end after everybody had a good laugh. At the expense of these young ladies, Stern asked them a whole bunch of questions about different designers and you know things things related to the to the fashion industry, and they knew what it, they knew all the answers. Right, and it was it was his way of demonstrating the fact that 
I mean, the I guess that expression it everybody knows something about something. What is know? that one saying? They say if you judge a if you judge a fish by the way it can climb a tree, you'll think it's useless or something like that. I don't know. There's, there's some... dude. If you show me a fish that can climb a tree, I'm impressed. I, well, that's the point. Yeah. They can't, but it, they're not supposed to. They're supposed right. to swim in the water. They have a, they have a useful purpose if they serve their useful purpose, then that's good. Yeah. But if you judge them based on something that is not in line with their proposed purpose, that's just silliness. But if I judge a fish by the way it can climb a tree, and it and it can't climb a tree, I'm going to be like, well, that's okay, because you're not supposed to climb a tree. But then when that one does climb the tree... That's freaking awesome. <laughs> I'd be like, whoa! That is an impressive fish. That is an impressive fish. Yeah. So there you go. Are we at time? We're at time. Oh, thank goodness, because I got a this tickle in my throat. It's like I got a it's like I got a small grandchild just tickling my throat. It's like you have a little fish in your throat. It's like a little fish in my throat. So all right, well listen, I I don't even know what the heck I'm gonna title this episode. <laughs> But if you made always it, the fun part. Yeah, I mean if you made it this far, you know, like it. Congratulations. And share. Yeah, thank, thank you so much for making it to the end. We might you start want a free T-shirt. We might start naming y'all because we pretty yeah. much can. Yeah, for sure. So Dave, good. Thank you for being our only listener. And no, uh, that's not true, Ben. Ben, yeah, my I've friend met, Ben. I haven't met Ben yet. Ben, we need to meet one of these days. <laughs> Absolutely. Does Ben go to Hands for Hope at all? He does quite regularly okay. when yeah. his wife's uh, are in town. Yep. So when I'm not around, is what you're saying? Uh, well, you, yeah. Yeah, which is a lot, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for hands for hope, I feel like I'm around a lot, but you know, anyhow, uh, dude, what's, what's our conclusion? Come up with some kind of conclusion since this was your I topic. Got nothing. You got nothing. I didn't uh, even know how we talked for 20 minutes about I, that. I, this is going to be our highest rated episode ever. I can tell. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, listen, thanks for listening. If you like the podcast, like it, share it, review it. Help us grow this thing so we can both quit our jobs and become famous. And, and I, if you I, don't, well, don't look for it next yeah, week. Yeah, don't look. Just don't listen. Just stop listening. Don't write mean things on social media. All right? Okay. Until next time. Ciao, muchacha. Ciao, ciao.